Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to number nine in the series of the Jacques Sarbonne Premium Fountain Pen Ink Collection, Standard Full Line. Is that enough of a <laughs> title for you? Today we're doing a very pretty purple called Violet Boreal. And I think you're gonna like this one. Um, so let's get started. We'll flip right over. Uh, we are in the Bond Travel Gear 68 GSM Tomoy River Paper Journal. So that's where I start everything. And I always start with the broad nib. That's where I like to begin my study of each ink. Now these inks are available in the United States exclusively at the Goulet Pen Company. And they're the ones that sent me, they generously sent me samples of each of these 10 inks So uh, for us. Um, here we are, broad nib. It took about 30 seconds to dry or so. It was almost dry anyway. There was a little dot there that wanted to smear. And I wasn't seeing a whole lot of shading, but definitely there's subtle shading. It just isn't what I'm used to in some of the inks there. And then in the Goulet stub, the 1.5 millimeter stub, let me make sure we've got to focus or something, about 25 seconds to dry. And then it increased, the shading seemed to increase a little in here, but it was still wasn't drastic. It's just a very pleasing color. Um, let's see, here we go into the Lamy Fine Nib, and we find that it took 25 seconds to dry. Uh, looks a little darker in that nib, and um, my first impressions were that it's really pretty. Um, I, after, as soon as I inked it up and had it in the broad nib, I, I started and wrote a letter, a, a pen pal letter with it, and it was a very pleasant experience. I, th I found it was bright and saturated and it flowed really well. Uh, there are some purples I like better, but still, I really like this one. And it didn't show hardly any water resistance. So here's the chromatography. It just ran right up and there's, there's quite a bit of red in there. And then we get some nice kind of uh, traditional purple. So let's take a look at what it did in a 20 minute bath test. Uh, it did not completely vanish. But we, we don't find as much water resistance as we did on the last ink, which was the, uh, the blue one. You see the difference? I mean, you can read the, today's, the violet, but it just kind of fuzzed it out and it took away a lot more of the color. So yesterday's, or well, not necessarily yesterday, but our blue, southern blue, that one got an A in the clean out. That was no trouble at all cleaning out. And I don't expect this to be any trouble either, so... This is number nine, and there's only one more after this in the series. So let's go on to the other paper samples. Um, next will be Rhodia. We have Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper here. This little, ooh, I only got one page left. I hope this holds up. Okay, here we are in the broad nib. 25 seconds to dry. There's a little bit of variation in the line there. Um, I think I liked it better over on, you know, in general, I liked it better on the Tomoy River paper. But that's, you know, these are both really good papers. Here it is in the stub nib, 30 seconds to dry. And I, I really enjoyed what it looked like in there. It, it seemed to spread that ink out and, and brighten it just a little and it looked good. And then in the Lamy Fine nib, <laughs> I was trying to decide um, whether I, maybe I was writing too fast or, you know, which is always the, um, a consideration for me. If I slow down and print, I sometimes get a little more shading. So I tried to do that, but I still didn't get much shading in here. It was it was just light shading. Oh, somewhere between 20 and 25 seconds to dry. It was nearly dry at 20 seconds. Still a little bit of a smear. And I still wasn't ready to really... Oh, well, I did jot down prefer more vibrancy. Yeah, I kept... All the time I was writing with this one, I kept thinking about a different ink, which is uh, Noodler's Purple Mountain Majesties, because that is one of my new favorites. And I kept wondering about that because I knew that that had a different, something different about it. And I kept thinking, well, it does, this one doesn't quite compete with that, for me anyway. Okay, this is the CBS Caliber Notebook, um, an inexpensive little notebook from the pharmacy here in the U.S. And this paper caused the ink to lighten up quite a bit. I think you can probably see that if you gaze over the three samples, that um, 
it definitely lightened on here, maybe a little more than it usually does. And that was throughout all three nibs. So like if you compare um, even Tamoy River to this or um, Rhodia to this, there's a little step down in, um, in, in the uh, brightness or the purpleness of it. But it took 30 seconds to dry and we lose most of the shading from it. It becomes even more subtle. And then in the stub nib, 20 seconds it was completely dry, and that's good. So down here, the fine nib, I guess, was having a good day. It took 30 seconds in that nib to dry. That was really strange, but every once in a while I get something like that. Uh, it was laying down the ink today, I guess. And I put good paper ink match, and this did surprise me. Despite the fact that we do see how much it lightens on here, there was no smoothness trouble. This paper, the CVS and the uh, 68 GSM Tomoy River were my favorite to write with on this. And, and then the Rhodia, it's not it was bad or anything, but I actually felt like it flowed across these two papers better, and that, that really did surprise me. And I'm talking about all three nibs, not just one, or I would think, well, the stub nib sometimes depends on how I hold it, but uh, it was throughout, across the board. So we get just typical ghosting on the CVS. Oh, I had one more sample to show you. Let me go ahead and show you. This is the uh, Georgia Pacific 20 pound copy paper. I hadn't been doing this with every one of them, but I thought I would check it and see what, what happened. It lightened considerably on here and it feathered a lot. Um, and it was quick to dry. I guess it was dry around 10 seconds because at eight seconds it was smearing. That's in the broad nib. And then down here, well, it was nearly dry at 10 seconds in the stub nib. And we, I got a lot of feathering in my writing sample. And then it even feathered in the, the fine nib However, it wasn't really bleeding through, so let's turn that over and fold it. That way we get our purple on the back, and this is just as if it was in a notebook. I maybe saw just a tiny bit here, and some of the red marker that I used, this was a, a Stabilo. The Stabilo bled through, but just ignore that because that's not really what we were looking for. So we get quite a bit of ghosting on the cheap copy paper but you could get by with this if the feathering didn't bother you and if you were using like a Japanese fine or extra fine you might not even worry about the feathering it might not happen but this this is a Lamy fine nib so okay so now we're resuming going on the back of the pages this is the Rhodia 80 GSM and we see no bleed through just a little bit of ghosting which is I think quite normal and then back on Tamoy River 68 GSM. Hold that up for you. We, we do get ghosting, which is tip very normal for this kind of paper. Uh, but once you get your writing on this side, uh, I just wouldn't expect it bother you unless that kind of thing does bother you. Okay, uh, here is the splatter. Oh, that was fun to do. That was, it's, it really is pretty. And the more of it you use, um, like you see, it's, it's a little lighter in the writing than it is where it really went on. So, I mean, this is a beautiful ink, but I think there's just something about the brighter ones for me, like, um, oh, uh, I'm trying to think. Bunga Box Lamont is one of my favorites. Let's put our ink of the day on here so we can. And it's brighter and it shades more, and I guess I'm just spoiled, so. Okay. So this was a little bit of a challenge. I was having a hard time finding a match for this ink. So but that makes it fun, really. So our ink of the day is right in the middle. It wants to fold, and I've been trying to get it to <laughs> behave, but it, it's sort of like, yeah, just got a little bit warped. I don't think that really helped, but we tried. Okay, so ink of the day in the middle, Violet Boreal. And on, it does remind me of Caveco Summer Purple, but we're still, it's, today's is still a little bit closer to the traditional purple. Um, maybe it has less red in it than the Summer Purple. I'm not sure. And then I even, I was looking at this KWZ Standard Berry, which is just gorgeous, by the way, and I blew it by using most of it in a pen and forgetting that I might want to review it someday, and I will get more. I'll probably just order a sample uh, sometime when I'm ordering, which is, you know, when that happens. 
Um, so don't feel sorry for me. I'm the one that put it in a, a pen and I didn't, I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, that's really pretty and not necessarily matching by any means. In fact, that was what was so neat. Even Annie's mix reminded me of it. In fact, quite a bit actually. And I'll go back and see what the recipe said. Um, her, um, Annie is a viewer here and a pen pal of mine. And she sent me a generous sample of uh, her purple that she mixes. And that has a little complexity in it. Whereas I really feel like, let's see, let's just re-glance at the chromatography. Maybe I, yeah, we did look at it, but see, it's not like it, like it's just flat purple running up, you know, one color or anything, but we don't actually see that coming out. So when we do the Nick Stewart technique, we're going to find out whether anything further will happen. And I am eager to see, because I do like an ink like Diamine Amazing Amethyst where we get all the like colors that are in there coming out in the chromatography. I enjoy that. And Krishna Anakai is one that did that. It made beautiful Nick Stewart art. So and this the camera's brightening, brightening this one up, which often happens and it's uh, it's got a lot of sheen on it, so we all know that we've got to get samples of these inks, if at all possible, in order to find out whether it's for us. Um, but I do enjoy looking at them in comparison, and I think other people have mentioned that that does help. It isn't, uh, it's, you still have to get a sample, I think, in order to know. But we've got some really beautiful ones here. Mont Blanc, La Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. This one veers over almost toward maroon over here. And, and beside uh, Summer Purple, I'm getting a lot of that too. That's what made me think maybe there was more red in some of these. And then Diamine 150th Anniversary Purple Dream. I can't wait to do a profile on that one. That's a really dark purple, but I think I'm going to like that in a nib. And then Diatrementus Aubergine is one I've had a long time. And that has a lot in common with today's. Um, and Diatrementus inks are, are really awesome too. So. so I have a lot of inks to get excited about and I've got so many more. So I'll try to run through them quick. Noodler's Violet. Now that one is a lot darker. You see it looks more like Aubergine. Um, what else? Does, maybe it looks a lot more like uh, the Purple Dream. So there's that one. Oh yes, and then there's a uh, Ink Journal's Holiday Blend. This is another one like Annie's where we will have to refer back to our recipes if we want to make it. But you can mix platinum inks and come up with this one. Um, so that's another option, but it isn't a complete look-alike. There is a difference there. Oh, here's another. If you like shimmer inks, this is Diamine Purple Pizzazz. And it's got that gold shimmer. It's gorgeous. It's got all that saturation and it looks like some complexity. Of course, you've got all that shimmer even down here. So we're not looking at a total lookalike, but it makes me think of it only darker. Diamine Purple Pizzazz is quite a bit darker. I don't know how much more of that I have. That could have come in an ink flight, in which case, ugh, that would... Okay, here's one of my favorite inks. I bought this almost immediately after a pen friend sent me a sample, I just said, I can't live without this ink, Noodler's Purple Mountain Majesties. And it does, it looks gorgeous in a nib. It's quite a bit more saturated. And I was, that's why I was trying to tell myself, look, I always go toward these, you know, these darker, yet not too dark. I still want to know that it's purple on my page. And I, I appreciate and love the lighter purples too. And I've got pen friends where this would be their absolute. This area here would just be perfect for them. Uh, okay, we've already looked at that one. Okay, so now let's look at a more purple purple. Uh, Twisby Royal Purple. So here comes a newcomer on the scene, which I really like. Um, and I have determined though that I have purple in-house that's quite a bit like this. And now I have 18 mils of the Twisby. I'm not regretful at all because I'm really happy to be able to uh, compare them and, and use them and get to know the properties of those new inks. Okay, and Tasha Murasaki, let's, let's look at both at the same time. I would have said Tasha Murasaki was more purple, but when I look at these two, I like the Twisby one better. And of course, I know we're looking at uh, the Jacques, Jacques Arbonne Violet Boreal, and you can see that we're a long way from crayon 
uh, kindergarten purple here, but I thought it would still be helpful for all of us purple lovers. Oh, and Waterman tender purple. Just for grins, let's have Twisby on the left here and Waterman at the same time. You can tell they're not exactly alike, but wow, do they have a lot in common. They really do. Uh, and they don't look like today's, so I'm probably going to get in trouble. But Okay, here's Diamine Imperial Purple. This almost made the panel, but you can tell it's more traditional purple. Um, so it puts it just in a little bit of a different category. It, it'd be more at home on a panel with Amazing Amethyst. Okay, but, but many people have this. And that might help you place uh, what's going on with today's, I hope. Oh, and here's one we will be covering. Uh, Pure Pens, Flower of Scotland. Oh, and I'm, I'm about to embark on a reading journey. I'm going to start the Outlander series of books because I thought if the books are better than the series, that's going to make my winter. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, but that's a pretty purple. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> okay, so that's, <laughs> that's a, lot of, uh, a lot to take in. But there you have it. And let's talk about, okay, so you would think, right? You'd think this would be like off the charts. But I think I'm judging this ink by other purples, which makes a lot of sense because I'm a, I'm a total purple addict. I, I mean, I've got more purple ink than I should have. And I, one of my favorites is Bunga Box Lamont. That, that's my, one of my most luxurious uh, bottles. My, my friend... Um, and there her initials sent me two samples before I finally, I just, I said, I got to get a bottle. And then uh, the Purple Mountain Majesties, which is darker um, and is different, but, but very, very pretty and, and quite similar too. And then my new, fa uh, one of my new favorites, the Straits Pen Honest Ink Bougainvillea Purple. And well, we better not go on because that's, I'm just, oh mercy, I'm coming out of the closet as a total ink addict. But uh I think that ship's already sailed. <laughs> okay. Um, I say it, it's a pretty ink. I love the flow. I know it's going to be safe to clean out of my pens. I wouldn't even hesitate to put it in uh, my one little, or my two, now I have two vintage pens. Another pen friend sent me um, a 1960s pen, which I'm just um, getting to know, and I'll be showing you soon. Uh, I feel like this ink would be safe for that. Uh, it is a little light for me, and that surprised me, really, because, of course, when you look at an ink like this, um, we all know we have to get them in the nib, and it's gorgeous, and it is, and it's pretty in the nib, too, but it lightened a lot on Tamoy River paper when I wrote my letter, and I felt like I just want something that jumps off the page a little more. I thought the saturation was really good, above average, so I gave it a 6, and the flow was definitely really good. Shading was below average, so I gave it a three. Uh, no bleeding, not even on copy paper. I can say that for sure. There was feathering on copy paper, but I don't ding it here for that because that's not fountain pen friendly paper. Dry time was average. No sheen, sh halo, or shimmer that I saw. Hmm. And I gave it overall of a six, but we have to keep in mind this is personal opinion and preference and, and you know, keeping in mind the the cost versus all the purples that I'm already um, <laughs> tied to. <laughs> so there you have it. So let's find out what happens when we do the Nick Stewart technique. I'm, I'm really eager to see. Let's see. I have, think I have a new... Yeah, hiding back here, I have a new paper that I started on the Twisby inks. So um, we'll just find out what happens when we try that. And I do have... I thought we'd get back the gray, because gray and purple go together pretty good. So we've got today's and the gray from this series. And a big mess everywhere. <laughs> to, the two pans are loaded up, of course, and the paintbrush is ready. Hope I'll be able to do this without making a mess. And I want a couple of brushes available for the gray ink. I need to make sure they're clean. I feel like they are because they were over by the sink in the drying rack, but <laughs> every once in a while, mistakes are made. So here we go. They're clean. Okay, I'm going to put down... Oh, I wanted to mention, this is for you, Marilyn. Um, when, I, when I use this big brush, 
I don't just put it on after putting it in the water. I do get a pretty good amount of the water off of the brush, but I don't squeeze it out. So that may make a difference to you. And then if I want to add more water, then I do. But this holds quite a bit of, of water. And I want to have enough, but not just so it's rolling off the page. I want plenty, but I don't know if that'll help. I think there was a question, but my mind is so full that I, I might be remembering something wrong. But Oh, that's pretty. Huh. It didn't travel very far, but wow, it sure does have a, a reaction to the water. Okay, we'll just do one more, and then we'll... Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay. I'm going to want to keep that available. <clears throat> Grab our, our uh, Jen Hao with a, a broad... Uh, I was going to say Yowo, but it, it's Yowo, but it's a Goulet branded nib. <clears throat> this has been the best change I've made recently to my reviews is switching because I love my serendipity but I'm getting a much more even writing with this pen because it's it's in the converter it's feeding very I don't have to worry about dipping so you know why I didn't put it on here because I was using this so I need to order another one for my personal letter writing and and uh, you know, not rotating the way I do. I rotate the, the ink so quickly to review. Two or three, maybe four days is all that I get. And then I'm, I'm out of it. So I'll be, I miss this nib, but that's okay. That's only as far away as an, uh, just ordering another one. So, but, so I kind of resisted change and that's what you get that I was missing out on having a much better experience. Okay, so there's that. And we'll just kind of let it uh, swirl around and do its thing and then I do want to introduce a little bit of gray oh my goodness I, look at that that you guys are seeing that probably while I'm talking and not looking I like how that's coming out I don't want to pick it up right now because if I do it's gonna it's gonna go berserk okay I forgot this gray is not real movable so maybe we can just use it as a oh dear that's too much <laughs> okay <clears throat> Oh, neat. We've got a forest and everything coming out. Oh, I like that. I keep forgetting that all we have to do is hint that the eye and the mind creates what's going on. <clears throat> and now I, I have the ability to bring in the detail brush. Let's see. I, I'll need to rebalance that because I put so much black there. But <laughs> Oh, I like this. This is so cool. <laughs> And I sat there, you know, thinking, which color am I going to put with purple? And I realized, well, I know it goes with gray. <clears throat> oh, dear. Okay, I just opened a portal there. <clears throat> All right, now I know what, what's going on in my mind. I really wanted... Hmm. What I really want is probably the brush that's not here. Oh, no, it is. It is. I'm going to grab up the little detail brush and just see whether I can get a line here. Okay, it's not going to give me enough color. There, that's better. Whoops. I've had all the windows open, so don't be surprised if you see a fly or moth go by. I mean, now we've got screens, but I think opening up for Willy and Princess has really made a Oh my gosh, this is a good combination here. Uh, there's, I don't know if you can see it, light blue, kind of a light purple coming out. <clears throat> and I think probably while, while the getting is good, I need to add in a little bit of detail. Just a little anyway. Somehow I'm kind of motivated to make the old-fashioned tree that I used to do every time. I don't know why. Oh, but that up there is so pretty. Hmm, I feel like the bottom of the tree is a long way from the horizon line. Well, that's okay. We'll just try to come back in and put a little bit of ground near it or something. <clears throat> 
Also, don't be too concerned when you dot in there because it's going to fuzz out. The, the chromatography and the working of the paper and the ink continues long after. Um, long after we think we're finished. Where's that little... There it is. This little detail brush. I just thought maybe at the bottom of the tree I'd add a little. Oh my goodness, this has gone too long. My camera's likely to say, you know, no way, Jose. <laughs> too long. Okay. So, I think I better end because I know I had a bad experience the other day where it said, file's too full, you can't do anything with your phone anymore. So, what is next is really exciting. It will be the last one in the series. It'll be the Blue Manu. And it's a bright blue. It's beautiful. We've got, we're going to have a lot of comparisons because it's a blue inky desk that I'm working with. So, so let me know what you thought of today's and how it fits into your view of purple. How you like it and everything. And wow, that, what's not to like about this? This is worth the whole having that whole sample. Because I like how this acted and it's just fun. Okay, I got to go because I don't, I don't want to have my phone freeze up. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here and let me know what you thought of this one. Um, bye for now.